Here are a few things that I would like to talk about that I would like to see changed in Genshin Impact so that this game doesn't fall off a cliff and just unalives. Because right now, I can definitely feel again at the end of every patch, this always typically happens, the disinterest or uninterest in the player base as well as content creators towards Genshin Impact and it is always a very very sad sorry sight to see. So today in Genshin Monday, actually coming on a Genshin Monday, I want to talk about this stuff. Hello guys, Atsu here, I just wanted to throw my intro there somewhere before I completely forgot but I'm going to be going over all the things that, well not all the things but some of the main things that I would like to see changed in Genshin Impact while taking on some of the weekly bosses. So number one, and I think this is one that a lot of people really, really want. It's very simple. Artifact loadouts. Like, I, I'm tired, like, genuinely, genuinely tired that I can't, for example, this Songli build, Gladiator's Finale and Archaic Petra, this can be put on any of my Geo characters that scale off attack. So, for example, Aether, who I do have on Geo Resonance right now, basically has the same set, but it's just inferior. If I could just copy and paste this from Zhongli to Aether or from Zhongli to Ningguan, for example, whenever I want to switch them around and I don't want to play with Zhongli, not that that's ever going to happen, but for example, if I wanted to switch them, it would be really nice if I could just copy and paste it across and just basically strip Zhongli off his artifacts. I know you guys want to strip Zhongli for other reasons, but you guys understand what I'm saying. So that is the number one thing that I would like change. It's a quality of life thing and I assume it's probably not super easy to do, but you know how you're versed at the cha 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 ching cha ching. So, no excuses. No excuses. I've had enough. I've had enough. Realistically speaking, this is a quality of life thing that needs to happen for the longevity of the game, especially for people who are now starting to get like dilution with their artifacts and they have like a ton of artifacts lying around. But, you know, it's like they have three pieces out of a potential five pieces that they need and they just want to kind of mix and match it with other characters artifacts and just throw them on someone else. And I really wish it was way more straightforward. The same thing with like, for example, my Garni artifact set is my best Blizzard Strayer set, but I'm not always going to be playing with Ganyu. If I'm not playing with Ganyu, I like to put it on Ayaka, I like to put it on someone else like Kaya, or any other Cryo character that I may want to play with. And it's just very, very, very tedious. It's very, very frustrating that there's all these sort of, what's the words, hurdles to get past to actually enjoy grinding out artifacts and playing with your characters. Now, a lot of this video is just going to be me upset and molding at the lack of a, you know, a very good artifact system. Ah, uh, no! Ah, uh, it is what it is. It is what it is. Okay, Devalin, get your ass over here. Goodbye. Okay. Awesome. This is, this is end game content, guys. This is end game Genshin content. This is how we play Genshin Impact at AR60. And then boom. Oh, drop down and then boom. Goodbye. Right, so that is AR60 Devalin done and dusted. So the next thing that I want to talk about, and I guess I kind of need to address like the psychology of a gacha gamer because the Genshin Impact community, guys, is very, 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 how should I say this? Diverse. It has a lot of people from different cultural backgrounds. And it also has a little different people from different age brackets, which is the most important thing is, you know, someone who's playing this game as a 13 to 16 year old is going to have a completely different experience with someone who's like between the age of 26 to like 33, 34, whatever the age brackets are, because one of them has like an income and has their own job and they're going to see the game differently if they're like paid to win or low spender or whatever. And the other one that doesn't have any money is going to be low spender or just F2P. So the way they see this game is going to be different. Now, ultimately, and this isn't to bash on F2P, the way this game survives at the end of the day is by making whales spend. It's going to be from the giga whales and the whales and like the medium spenders. All of the money they spend is what keeps the game alive. Having said that, F2Ps are also important because they are the ones that are like, they're like a fishnet trying to attract their whale friends into playing the game. And then they're not going to end up spending. It's like free advertisement. Now, the thing here is, where do you strike the balance to make everybody happy? There has to be like a win-win situation. And with regarding artifacts, I think both whales and F2P players are not very happy with the artifact system. Now, a lot of people are like, oh, you should just make it like there should be an artifact pity or there should be like a fixed artifact rate. And the thing is, while that feels good or like it looks good on paper, 
realistically speaking, I actually don't think that's a good idea. And the reason why is that we all this we all play this game because we're gambling addicts. We we like RNG. Now, as much as it might sound bizarre to say that, we do love RNG. There's no RNG in the game, there's no excitement, there's no gambling, there's no thrill from the dopamine dopamine rush of actually gambling, which is what this game is essentially based on. It's it's just gambling. It's glorified gambling or it's like sugar-coated gambling that is exposed to young people and old people alike and ultimately who do I want to pick here? Mm -mm -mm. Who should we use here? You know what? I haven't used Aether Geo Travel in a long time. Ultimately, I think the main issue is that we all want that short-term instant gratification. And we're not really concentrating on how much long-term gratification and achieving and overcoming a challenge can feel good. And what I mean by that is, for example, one of my fondest memories of this game was, or the excitement that I had from completing all the Geoculus hunting. I'm sure you guys will have remembered if you have done the Geoculus in Liyue, and you had to unlock that quest with all the pillars. And at the end of that quest, you actually get a five-star artifact. And for a lot of people, that was their very, very first five-star artifact. And I would personally love it if they introduced like a quest line or a quest series. Or at the end of just quests in general, if we could have like a five-star artifact reward. And maybe it would not be garbage. It would be great. But we don't get artifacts other than from farming mobs or farming domains. And I feel like artifacts are integral into the enjoyment of our characters because if we don't have good artifacts, the characters aren't gonna play like trash. It is un the unfortunate reality of the game. So one thing that I know a lot of people don't like is quests. Why? Because the rewards are unrewarding or the quest line is just boring or some of the story writing is very poor, or mediocre, is not voice acted, etc, etc. And some of these things can't be helped. You know, there are protocols in place, for example, during COVID. I'm sure they ended up losing and cancelling a lot of different voice acting sessions. But the rewards are just freaking abyss. Like, what am I looking at? What am I looking at here? What is this? This is, this is garbage. Right, it's not bad, but it's definitely not great. Not only are the Primo Gem rewards not that great, the main thing missing from these kind of long quests, because they do take time, is I think it would be nice if we could get like five star artifacts from this. And the reason I say that is because a lot of new players, a lot of old players alike, we want that excitement. We want that excitement of not knowing exactly what we're going to get, even if the reward at the end is going to be garbage, you know. There is a win and lose situation. When you create a win and lose situation, Winning feels extra good. Obviously, losing feels bad, but winning feels extra good. There has to be a win condition. There has to be an opportunity to win and to experience that dopamine rush. You also need to understand the feeling of losing because if you understand the feeling of losing, then, you know, it makes the win feel even that much better. I hope I'm making sense of what I'm saying here. Essentially, what I'm saying is if you're always guaranteed to get a good artifact, that is just going to become your new level of average. And then every single time you get a new artifact, it's just going to be an average piece. And it's just not that interesting. So there is no way to differentiate between good and bad. So you do need the bad in the game in, in the sense of bad RNG or getting unlucky so that when you do get lucky, it feels extra good. For example, with these drops as well. Hopefully I can get something good because I have not gotten anything good for a long, long time. And yes, I'm used to this because this is the average for me now. If I get anything above average, it would be nice, which is a dream solvent or a billet drop or even just three materials from this boss monster here, Tortellini Man, which I didn't get. Not that I need these materials anymore. And that's another thing that I would like to touch on is the efficiency of farming the weekly bosses. I know a lot of people now are very, very, very dissuaded from farming weekly bosses because they're like there's not enough resin and i think this is also another thing is i don't see how it's a bad thing for hoyoverse if there's more opportunity and more reason to play this game and other than the fact that there are obviously like some political barriers i'm pretty sure there are some political barriers in china regarding how much children can play games now which is kind of insane to me, but I also understand uh, being someone who used to be extremely addicted to games and it really made my work ethic and my life uh, essentially miserable in the long term. That 
you know, playing too much of gaming is a bad thing. But at the same time, this is a global product now. It's not just, you know, for Chinese people. It's it's worldwide. And I don't see a huge issue with just even slightly increasing the rate at which resin restores, as well as increasing the cap of resin. Or, or hear me out, and this is not a big ask, just increasing the limit of how much condensed resin we can own. So, you know, maybe that means like the days I can't play this game, I log on, I condense my resin, and then boom, I can save up to like 10 to 20 condensed resin to spend on one day. Where I'm like, oh, finally I have some time off to play Genshin Impact. I get to play for several hours today. Boom, boom, boom. I have condensed resin over and over and over again. And it's a very, very satisfying feeling to be able to play when you want to play. I don't necessarily want to play every single day because there are some days I'm like, oh, Genshin Impact. I have to do Genshin Impact again. Oh, I'm so tired of Genshin Impact. I know I sound like a sport brat, but this is like coming from a position of people who even has to go to school or have to go to work. Sometimes you get home, you don't want to log into Genshin, but you're going to get punished if you don't grind out your resin, if you don't condense your resin, if you're already at resin cap. Maybe you have multiple days in a row where you don't want to play. And I do feel like it would be nicer if we could just store up that resin. It will still encourage people to log in every day, which is a win for Hoyoverse. All of us will still be logging in every day just to condense our resin and we'll be able to save it up. And I, I just feel like it's a no-brainer. That for me is genuinely a no-brainer. Am I going to hit Andreas here? Nope, I missed. Oh, I missed completely. Anyway, I feel like that is a complete no-brainer. The other thing is, it is about time, guys, that this changed, okay? It is about time the standard banner started receiving, or we just get a completely new standard banner. We get a standard banner rotation one, which is this, and standard banner rotation two, where we get new weapons in here, and for example, Venti, Zhongli, Albedo, Tartaglia. It is about time they have been added into the standard banner rotation. It's been a year now. Because right now, and this goes back to the psychology of winning and losing, losing your 50-50 feels absolutely awful. It feels terrible. When you see a Chi-Chi, and if it's a Chi-Chi constellation, oh, mother Jesus, does it feel bad. It feels absolutely freaking awful. However, imagine that was like a Zhongli constellation or a Venti constellation. Okay, Venti's constellations are a little bit copium, so maybe those would still be considered losses. But imagine that was like a child constellation because Tartaglia completely changes gameplay with his constellations. And imagine getting to eventually like a C6 constellation child, right? Think about Jake. Think about Ant, Tuonto, and Anthony Chen. They both have C6 Chi Chi. Imagine that was some, some other character, for example, Venti or a Zhongli or a Albedo or a Tartaglia. Any of, or a Klee, any of these early day characters that we've had for a very, very long time. I feel like that would feel a lot better. It would feel a lot better. Let me see where are all the characters here. Boom, boom, boom. We have got... So, who is early? Venti. It would be great to get a Constellation of Venti. I don't have Constellations on Venti. I don't have Constellations on Albedo. I don't have Constellations on Tartaglia, actually, now that I think about it. I also don't have Constellations on Klee. So, any of these characters, if you just throw them in... It would be great. I feel like it would be absolutely great. Alternatively, we could have, for example, a Monstat banner with Monstat only characters. We could have a Liyue banner with Liyue only characters, which are permanent. They can just be permanent, and they also use, instead of intertwined fate, they use acquaint fate, right? So you have an opportunity to use s s these fates on not this tragic banner. Now, I know on the flip side, there'll be people who are like, oh, I actually want Kerching, I actually want Mona, I want Chi Chi, I want Jean, I want Diluc. And that's absolutely A-OK. -okay. And I feel like the solution to this, if you are going to dilute the pool of the standard banner, if you're not going to make a new standard banner, if you're going to put in like Child, you're going to put in Klee, you're going to put in Zhongli, Venti, Albedo, etc. into the standard banner, it's obviously going to make it way harder to pull any of these other characters that are already in there. But... The way MiHoYo, or HoYoVerse, apologies, has been approaching their banner rotations, I feel like this is a very, 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 very easy fix. And what I mean by that is, at the moment, we have one new character, two reruns. How about one new character alongside a rerun, and then the second half, you have another rerun, plus one of the standard banner characters as a banner, every single time. So instead of having three banners every rotation, we can now have four. And every single month, 
the situation would be. So maybe we'll have a Jean banner this month. The next one will be Dilok banner, then a Kaching banner, then a Chi Chi banner, which is just there. It doesn't have to be limited to four banners. We can have five banners. We can have six banners. And the reality is they can just have this as a permanent constant rotating standard banner character banner every single patch. Because at the moment we are getting traditionally three one new character or two new characters, typically one new character alongside two reruns. But why are we not having four? Because there was a time we had four banner characters at the same time. For some reason, it's gone down to three. And I know people are like, oh, but it's just to tie in with the story. This is a gotcha game. Ain't no, nobody cares about tying in with the story. You can have three characters that tie into the story and just have a rotating standard banner character which is just there for people who do want to pull for the standard characters. If they don't want to pull for the standard characters, then they don't have to because nobody is forced to pull in this game. That is actually a good artifact piece. This is a terrible drop. And have you guys noticed, my weekly boss drops have, for some I feel like they've been nerfed. I don't, I don't know, maybe I'm just going cuckoo, but I feel like they've been nerfed. We are going to roll that piece though, and hopefully we are going to get something great. If I can find it. Wanderer's Troop. And this actually ties in nicely with my next point. The artifact system, we all know, is not great. A lot of people don't like it. One very easy fix, because this ties in with another point. Let me talk about the other point first, is I am running out of artifact space. Now, right now, I'm on 1,250 out of 1,500. Two days ago, I used a crap ton of artifacts on the artifact strong box, and I'm already back up to this amount. My F2P account is running out of artifact space as well. And I know a lot of end game players who are like AR57 and above, even F2P or low spenders are starting to run out of artifact space. And people don't necessarily want stuff from the artifact strong box because obviously you only have the options of Wondrous Troop. You have Noblesse Obligé. You also have mm -mm -mm, Bloodstained Chivalry and also Gladiators. Now, Gladiators and Noblesse and even Wondrous Troop is not bad at all. Bloodstained can be decent-ish as well. Energy Recharge. Ooh, thank you very much. Now, the thing about this is the Artifact Strongbox is an RNG fiesta, which is why for some people who enjoy gambling, it's great. For other people, you know, you're going to get, you're going to hit an L after an L after an L after an L after an L. But when you eventually get that W of an artifact, it feels oh so, so, so good. And people are like, oh, then it's worth it. But obviously, if you are losing, it doesn't feel great. That is very nice. That's a max roll. And I feel like one of the solutions to not having a good time farming for artifacts is the artifact strongbox. I still have even when I get terrible artifacts, five star artifacts, I mean, at least I can use them for the Noblesse artifact strong box. But I have a reason to farm Noblesse because I want to farm it for Zhongli and make an ult build for him, Elemental Burst build. Other people don't have that same motivation for those artifact sets. And the easiest fix to that is simply, that is horrible. The easiest fix to that is simply just allowing us to pick any artifact set from the, from the artifact strong box. And I feel like this too is also a no-brainer because one, new players are also gated. And I feel like that's okay. Maybe you do want to force them into doing some quest lines so that you can help them progress into the story. I have to pick carefully here while I sacrifice. Mm. Okay, we'll just use these to get to 16. And... What I mean by that is, for example, Blizzard Strayer and the Heart of Depth set, the Hydra and the Cryo Damage sets, you can't do them unless you do Dragon Spine, right? I think that's fine. However, there is two avenues of looking at this. One is Artifact Strongbox. Make those two sets available to all players. And if Hoyoverse doesn't like that and they want to gate it behind the quest, that's okay as well. At least the people who do have... Act mm that's a really low roll so this is not a good this is not very good piece anymore but is you can still gate it behind the quest if they feel like it's necessary although i personally don't feel like it is good to gate being able to build your characters behind quests or regions especially the further we get into the game right now it's okay because you'll be able to access leeware and also dragon spine as well as inazuma within like a month although a month can be a really big disincentive to a lot of players i do think a month is still a-okay 
down the line when we get to like Fountain or we get to Kyanria, it's gonna be too long to grind it out. And it's the same thing with character ascension materials. With character ascension materials, some mobs are region locked. You're gonna have other materials like plants region locked as well. I, I don't like I get it, but at the same time, I feel like it's a terrible, terrible, terrible design choice in the sense that it's such a big turnoff for a gacha player or even players who are new to the game. They pull for a character and you're like, yes, I got the character. I won my 50 50. And then boom, all of a sudden it's like, ha, huh, well, you can't play with this character until you do the, the storyline, which is going to take you two months. It, and if you if you have a job or real life commitments, it's going to take you forever. So that in itself is already a huge L. And I, I really, really hope they do find a way to fix that, which is not necessarily just through pay to win means. I would be honestly down because I'm a giga well to, you know, have like a pay to win means of being able to instantly level 90 a character without having to farm and do all the tedious stuff. But at the same time, just for the sake of all players, I feel like it there should be another way to access these materials without having to go through every single region every single storyline to finally get to a point just so you can play a character i feel like that's just extremely tedious as a huge turn off for a lot of people who want to get into the game because for example someone might just see a character design and they're going to be like oh my god that character is fire i want to play this game just for the character i'm talking about me guys i'm talking about myself when i saw xiao and zongli i was like i am going to play this game just for those two characters because at first i used to think genshin impact was a degenerate game for degenerates who are just into oh look at my waifus you know like a waifu simulator but actually it's a waifu and husbando simulator so i was like yo there's some husbandos in there let me get on this game and then i stuck around i waited for zhongli i waited for xiao and the thing with them that i was able to do was i was able to farm for them very very easily very very quickly and i had a good time because i got to play with them at a decent level instantly for other players for example if you pull for raiden so I know a lot of people, Raiden, I believe, after the rerun, is like the most popular character or the top grossing character. Imagine you pull for Raiden and it's like, well, you better finish all of this storyline and questing. Otherwise, you ain't getting into Inazuma. It, it must feel terrible. It must feel terrible. And I can only imagine because I don't know that many new players that have gotten into the game who are still forcing their way just to get through to Raiden or Yaimiko or whatever. Yaimiko even more so is because you have to go even further. You have to go to Enkonomiya to <laughs> level Yaimiko up. It's just the gateway in the entrance or the barrier to entry for this game for new players for specific characters is way too high. They need to change that absolutely. The next thing, I know this is like a full on rant video guys. The next thing, oh Dream Solvent, thank you very much. The next thing that I want to change is i think this is a very easy one toggleable constellations i talked about this in my previous genshin monday which was actually a genshin sunday yesterday is you know for example the only one this really applies to that i can think of is like constellation six bennett and maybe constellation four tartalia i'm not 100 percent sure about c4 child but people are obviously like very scared of c6 in bennett some people are, you know, they regret C6 in Bennett. Other people are like, it's absolutely fine and they love C6 Bennett. And there's some people who want to play with C6 Bennett, who have C6 Bennett, but they also want to have the option of remaining at C5 Bennett as well. And that is absolutely fair as well. And uh, it's, again, just a no-brainer. It should just be, you know, be able to toggle it on and off. So that's another one I don't understand why that hasn't been introduced into the game yet. And I wish it was. Let me see, who do I want to play with here? You know what, we haven't played with Kazaha in a pretty long time. We can also go with... Mm -mm -mm. You know what, I haven't played with Eula in forever. Is this going to be a disaster? Is my Eula built? Crit rate 80%. Hmm. Hmm. 6-6-6. I see. Let's let's switch to Raiden here. Just so we have super con this is gonna be a disaster, guys. I do not play with Eula and I've not played with Eula for a long time. But let's see how this works. The other thing, and this is one that's been touched on, I saw this in Tenha's video as well, is 
it just give us more stuff to do in the adventure book. If we open the adventure book, it's it's very, very empty. It finishes at chapter 9. It stops at Spiral Abyss 6 3. Spiral Abyss. Why? Why? Level up a character level 80? Why is it stopped here? And you know what the exciting thing about this adventure book was? This is one of the few ways to get some of your first five star artifacts. So this goes all the way back to my first or one of my first points is the reward. It feels good. You get good rewards here. Very nice rewards that feel good. And then you get the little bit of spicy RNG reward, which is like, oh, am I going to get something good? Okay, I got something L, but you know, you move on to the next one. You're like, am I going to get something good? And you're working towards a grind. And when you do get something good, it feels so good. And we don't have enough of that in the game. We don't have enough goals. We don't have enough achievements. We don't have enough enough incentive to grind this game that makes us feel like that validates our progression in the game. And that definitely needs to change. Now I said this was going to be for Eula, so let me uh, let me get some art. Let me get some energy for Eula here. Oh, this is like one of the worst domains to be running on Eula because I'm taking damage. Uh, when I say running for Eula, it's because I have the battle pass weapon. And I think every time I take damage, I lose stacks, which is not ideal. So I'm not sure if sheer cold actually counts towards that. Who knows? We're, we're going to take this. Okay. We're going to heal up here. We're going to try and avoid sheer cold and burning to death here. And hopefully Eula can come out huge. All right, we're going to hope that Eula is going to go absolutely dummy mahusive. All right, boom, boom, boom. We'll drop this. Okay, we'll drop this. We'll drop this. Yep, yep. And we're going to drop that. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, okay, Eula. Okay. Oh, my God, please, please, please. Sheesh, let's go, Eula. And then into Raiden Shogun. Oh, oh. Okay, not bad. Not bad. I like it. I like it. Bear in mind, again, my Eula doesn't have a 5-star weapon and she's C0 talent level 666. But you know what? That was one of the fastest that I've been able to clear the La Senora. And we get one of the best name cards in the game as well. Yaimiko Kitsune Dreaming. Very, very cute name card. So let's add that on. Let me actually collect the reward. Let's not Pepega here. Let's collect that. Yoink Doodles. Gimme. What are we going to get? Only two, which is a shame. Again... Some stats look great, but main stat looks horrible. If we could have some way of changing the main stat, maybe we can roll the main stat and keep the sub stats. That would be great as well, but I think that would be a little bit overpowered, especially if it's not super expensive to do. But again, ultimately, not very good drops for something that took such a long time. Okay, next up, we can actually change our party. I'm going to change my name card as well. This name card is absolutely adorable, but... It's time to change it for Yaimiko. We'll rock the Yaimiko one for a while. I like Goro's one and I like Ito's one as well. And I've just realized I'm going on a complete tangent, guys. So I apologize. We've got last but definitely not least, which is going to be none other than Raiden Shogun Puppet. This is going to take some time. We are going to use Kazaha this time. Haven't used Kazaha in a while. Feels nice, actually, to play with Eula. Maybe I will start building her up. And someone else I want to build up eventually is going to be Kaya. And also Yun Jin. And I guess I want to build up Sing Cho as well. But let us see here. We'll go with Kazaha. And oh, Yaimiko did hit friendship level 10. So actually, I don't have any characters that I really want to farm friendship levels for. I only have Amber left, Sucrose, Barbara, and Noel. I think I have everybody else's name card. Actually, maybe not Chi Chi as well. But every and also Aloy. I know they're all female characters, guys, but I promise you I do not hate female characters. It's just that I have a strong preference for male characters and badass female characters because all of these badass female characters I have at friendship level 10. But let's go with Kazaha, let's go with Bennett. I want to try and do this as quickly as possible. Because it is a long fight and I know the video is getting longer and longer and longer and longer and longer. So we'll go with this team. We'll rock the Yoimiya again. And let us go in and hope for the absolute best. Yoimiya is definitely not my strongest pyro character. She is only talent level 666 as well. 
Kazaha, I believe, is talent level 12, 12, 12. Is he crowned on anything? No, 9, 12, 12. Bennett is 1, 6, 12. Also not crowned. And then... Okay, no, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. We're good, we're good, we're good. All right, I don't have any burst, which is pretty bad. So that's not a good start. That is already not a good start, but it's okay. It's okay, you know, it is what it is. We're gonna go with this. Boom, 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 boom. Okay, Yoimiya, it's your birthday. It's not your birthday, but Yoimiya putting in damage. Very nice. Very nice, very nice. Okay, Yoimiya, you're almost dead, but that's okay. All right, boom, give me my ult back. Give me my ult back. Give me my ult back. My ult missed. Okay, boom. All right, which one is it? Oh, it's this one. Boom. Boom. Okay, nice. I've lost my ult, which is not good. But, you know, we're going to work with it. She's almost in electro mode, which is also not great. I don't appreciate how I basically wasted my Bennett ult for nothing. But, you know, it is what it is. Ah, uh, she's going to go into electro mode here. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much. All right, I guess the question is... Can we iframe? This is what we'll be able to find out here. Is can we iframe her big ult? Is it possible? Zhongli's burst should be long enough. It should be long enough. Kazaha's burst as well is also very long. So maybe it's possible. Maybe it is possible. But I need, for that, I do need Zhongli's burst. Okay. Which I don't have. Oh, oh, shoot! Oh no! Okay, I just realized my burst is gone. She drains all my ult, so I can't. Oh, oh! I didn't know that. Now I know. Now I know. But you know what? The Raiden boss fight is a good boss fight. I actually do feel like it's a boss fight and it's somewhat challenging. Obviously, I'm wailing, but on my F2P account, this is definitely challenging, so I do appreciate that. And I would appreciate more boss fights like this in the future so mihoyo you're doing a good job with this kind of boss fight it is a good difficulty it is a very very good difficulty i do think a challenge is necessary in genshin impact day right we're gonna do that we're gonna put this down we're gonna do this boom 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 okay very good very good okay apparently i'm getting absolutely demolished right now that's absolutely a-okay boom 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 and then kaboom war god there we go that is the end of the video guys that's a bunch of stuff that's been ticking me off with genshin that i would like to see in the game and speaking of difficult bosses raiden being one of them it would be very 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 nice if oh look at that drop you see what i mean i'm happy with that we got a triple drop and we got a catalyst and this feels so good it feels so good because I know how stinky it is to keep losing. I lost on every other boss today. Every single other weekly boss, the drop was garbage. But the one that mattered the most came through clutch. And it feels so, so good. That's what I mean. I haven't touched on it, but it's something I've ranted on about over and over. And every single, like content creators ranted on about it we don't have end game content we need something like raids but that's something you know i can say that but i don't really have a realistic solution i don't have a design for raids and until someone comes up with it we can't really double down on yeah bring us raids bring us raids because what would that entail it will alienate a lot of casual players and that's a whole other discourse but today has been a pretty long genshin monday i hope you guys did enjoy and i feel like that drop was absolutely worth it I'm very, very happy with that. So materials-wise, we've got 5, 12, 14. 14, cra 14, not crowns, but 14 of these. Would I be able to triple crown Ayato if I wanted to? Hmm. I'm not sure how many of these materials I would need. But yes, thank you so much for watching, guys. Please let me know your thoughts and opinions on my suggestions. And also let me know what else do you not like about this game what else would you like to see change because i do want to commit some time to talking more about this on stream talking more about it on video because believe it or not hoyaverse does watch some videos well i hope they do anyway and they have listened to community backlash in the past so something that everyone can rally behind would be pretty epic so thank you so much for watching and have a wonderful wonderful day bye bye